everyone, it's Lori. Today's episode is going to be all about intentional camera movement. So I'm going to jump right in with a recent photo shoot. I'm going to show you some images, a little snippet of the techniques that I was using live so you can see the shooting techniques, and then we'll wrap up with talking about some editing tips and tricks. So this was the location that I was shooting. I was actually at a nature, nature park, and as I was walking along the sidewalk, I noticed these, I think they're sumac trees, and they were turning autumn colors. But what struck me was the branches providing such great form and structure, but the leaves were, you know, up and the sun was hitting them. So it was creating almost like a stained glass effect. And I knew instantly that intentional camera movement could be really fun with this subject. So I just started to decided to start playing and I probably stood there for maybe 10 minutes and tried some different shots. I was shooting with a 35 millimeter lens and I did not have an ND filter. I just flipped my lens to, um, I think if we look at this first image, F14. So between F14 and F16. And I was not, my shutter speed wasn't super slow, but because I was more in the shade and I was making really fast movements, I was able to get some interesting images. So this first image is very abstract, and this was making vertical movements and very fast, so very rapidly to just get all this gorgeous color. Now with this next image, you can see a little more detail and a little bit more of the sky. I didn't like these white kind of blobs, um, but this one was shot at one fifth of a second. So still not very, not very slow. All right, so this next one, it provides more structure. So you can see more of the branches and a little bit less of the um, streaked movement. So the technique I used for this one is where you kind of shake the camera just a little bit. You kind of jiggle it and that gives that textured look. Now this next image that I really liked, this one is kind of got a wave to it. My settings were exactly the same. So I didn't have to choose my settings. I just changed the technique that I was shooting. So with this one, it was a little vertical and a little sh shake at the same time. So you'll see that in that image. Now, I decided to play with a technique where you twist the camera almost like a half moon shape. And that gives this beautiful swirl. So that was one that I did. And then this is a second one where I twirled maybe a little bit slower. So you can see that. And then this last one is the one that I really liked. So just a full, full spin around. And that's where you really start with the camera tilted a little bit to maybe the left, and then you flip it and, and spin it around um, almost like a half circle to the right side. And that gives you these circles. So my settings were the same for all of them between F14 and F16, and only at about one fifth of a second. So if I had had an ND filter, I could have done a longer exposure, but I was just out on a nature walk and just wanted to try a little camera movement and not have to dig into my camera bag and stop the group that I was with. I'm really happy with the outcome in just a few minutes getting some really unique and beautiful fall images. So let me pause for just a minute. I'm going to show you a little video clip of me shooting these so that you can see the movements that I was making with my camera. Then we'll come back and I'll talk to you about just the minor editing that I did to get these final images. Okay, so you'll see the trees here that I am going to be shooting. And again, I noticed that, of course, the, the wind was blowing and so I wasn't going to be able to shoot these branches any other way than using intentional camera movement. So I am standing over where the majority of the leaves were. And you'll see right now, I am doing a variety of movements. So that's the half moon turn where I just turned it halfway. And I'm going to zoom in closer here for you. So you'll see that I'm just turning my camera like a half moon shape. 
And that's giving me those swirls, which are so fun. Now I'm gonna start moving the camera with a jerk motion. So just moving the camera a little bit towards my face. Now I am using live view, which I find helpful. Now I'm doing a very slow movement back and forth, which is where I was able to get some of that jiggle look. Now I'm trying a little bit of a twist again. So just twisting it around. And there again is that jerk movement where I'm just popping it towards my face to give that layered texture look. That's one of my favorite techniques um, for intentional camera movement. Seeing the movements helped. Um, I'm going to try to slow, slow down that video, so I hope it helps you see some of the hand movements that I was making. All right, so for this first image, I will show you some tweaks that I made. So this was actually the image on import. What I decided to do was take it into Photoshop and clone out some of these white areas to give it that true um, kind of stained glass look. So on import, the image was just a little bit dark. So I opened up the shadows and I also did a little bit of contrast. So that's my first tip for you. With ICM images, you can see without the contrast, it's a little soft. I like to pop the contrast, which with ICM photography, it brings out the details underneath. So it's my number one trick that I like to do in editing these images. All right, for this image, I liked it a lot, but I also didn't like all the empty space. And so what I decided to do was actually crop the image. So let's go to, this was the import, and I decided to play around with the crop and just come in a little tighter with it. And then again, I played with three things, and that's all I had to do to this image. I reduced the highlights a little, open the shadows and added a little bit of contrast. So whenever you shoot with ICM, my second tip would be be comfortable cropping. Sometimes part of the image may have something that you really don't like. And often when you crop it, you can get a really nice um, selection from the full image. Okay, so let's go over and look at this image. I really love this one with all the texture and the waves. And again, I'm going to bore you with my edits. It's really the three key factors. So for this one, I worked on the temperature just a little bit, but adding that contrast, I'll show you before and after. It just really makes it pop. Now this is one we could also add some texture to, but I think the contrast really does the trick. And this would be an option that I would play with the new point color. So we could come in and especially here where it has that fiery orange, we could select that and increase that saturation if we wanted. Look how that brings out those tones. We could also come in and maybe with this blue color, decide if we want to darken that blue and we want to come in and, and give that a little dark shift. So we could really give this a stained glass, um, really just bright, autumn looking image overall. We can always go back to our mixer or up to our basic. We could reduce the saturation just a little if we want to mute that, but I do like that pop of the orange. I think that really stands out. Now let's come down to this last image, which was one of my favorites. And this one I did some of the same changes to. So I'll show you this was before. So sometimes with your intentional camera movement images, they may be a little flat, especially if you have a lot of light coming in as I did with this image. So I encourage you to play with opening up your shadows. Again, we can come in and add some contrast and then you can work on adding some vibrance or you could selectively edit the colors. So I'm gonna come back down to this new point color again I'm going to grab that orange and just add a little bit more saturation just to make that pop. Grab it again and let's work on this blue. And I think again, I want to darken it a little. Just make that saturation a little stronger. 
And let's see if there's some other colors. I think the yellow is already bright enough, but let's try this shade of orange. And let's just saturate that. Now the yellow is a little bright for my taste. I am not one that loves a lot of bright yellow, so I'm actually gonna desaturate that. And now look at before versus after, just how we've really enhanced those tones using this new point color tool here in Lightroom. So very few edits to your ICM images. They really come out of camera almost ready to go. Again, my tips would be to add a pop of contrast, tweak your colors, and make sure your shadows are wide open. So this would be another one where just adding some contrast can make a big difference. I hope that you will get out in this season of autumn or winter and try some camera movement. It is so much fun. All you need to do is make sure that your settings, your f-stop is at at least f14 or higher, your ISO around 100, and just start making camera movements and have a lot of fun. Thanks, everybody.